Hi, I'm Andy Jordan and you're watching Guest List. Hi, this is Guest List TV. My name's Annalise. And I'm Lauren. And today we're here with Andy Jordan. How's it going, Andy? Hello, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yes, and we, we know you're from Made in Chelsea, but today we want to talk to you a little bit about music. Mm -hmm. We have a single out. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I've recently released a single called A Whole Lot of Water. Um, and it's just kind of a sort of bopping along, kind of get you up in the morning track um, that I hope is quite a reflection of my sort of personality. What's it about, really, would you say? I don't really know what it's about. <laughs> That's the whole point. Um, no, it's, it's, it's about not really knowing what to do in life and sort of staying relaxed about that. Um, so it's like a whole lot of water is kind of a metaphor for like all the different things that go on in life. Um, I wrote it, ironically, when I was at university, mm -hmm. and you're going through that stage of like, what am I going to do when I leave? Am I going to get a job? Or am I going to do a serious career like reality TV? Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that's how I... And then, bizarrely, I got really pissed one night and wrote it. Um, and woke up the next morning and I had it recorded on my phone. And that's how it came about. And yeah, Probably the best way to, to find it, I guess. So when did you first pick up a guitar? So I first picked up a guitar on my gap year. Um, my best friend, a guy called Chris, who I travelled with, is awesome at the guitar. And we're in Mexico and we found this guitar for like, I don't know, a tenner. So we bought it and decided to take it on the rest of the trip. Um, but I was so unnatural and so bad at it that I didn't play it for the rest of that year. I think I strummed like four chords. Mm. Um, and then I, I, he, when we got back to the UK, said, right, you keep the guitar and go and learn it. So I, I took it to university with me, and that's when I really started playing. Is that when you started songwriting as well? Yeah, they, they kind of came in quick succession, actually. Um, partly because uh, I, I'm so bad at the guitar that I can't play other people's tracks. Wow. So I was like, well, I better just make my own. <laughs> um, so I, I, I started out, I think the first song I wrote was just, the worst thing that's ever happened, actually. Um, and hopefully no one will ever hear it. I can't remember what it was called. But there's a few, uh, probably about five people have heard it and they still take the piss out of me for it. So, <laughs> so that's good. So um, musically, who are your favourite artists? Who do you go and see when you go and watch some gigs? Uh, I have such an eclectic mix. Like, I would like to go and see the Backstreet Boys. Uh, I loved watching Justin Timberlake. Mm -hmm. I saw him at Wireless this year and I was just absolutely blown away. Um, and then at the same time, I have a real love of like old school music, old school sort of soul and Motown and even like, you know, sort of Tracy Chapman, Joan Armour Trading. Um, I love soul and blues music. So that's kind of sort of inspires what I do with, with music as well. Um, last night, actually, I went to see a guy called Jose James, um, who's over from the US mm -hmm. and well I was, I was saying he's it was probably one of the sexiest gigs I've ever been to um, just really relaxed on stage and I love that kind of soulful vibe Brilliant. well we've heard about your gig on the 9th of November at the Borderline and we do have some questions specifically about that as well yes yeah, so w uh, you've got your new single out is there any other new songs you're going to be playing or it be covers what can we expect so at the moment, I've got two tracks of my own that I'll be playing, and then the most of the gig will be covers. Um, I've, I've started work on two new tracks of my own, which, depending on how they sound on the date, I may slip in. Um, they're also more upbeat tracks as well, which is quite fun. Um, and then the live show, I play with two, two musicians, uh, a guitarist and a cajon player. And... Uh, they are awesome and so we kind of bring like a real sort of bopping vibe and we do a lot of covers that are a little bit a range ranges from upbeat so we, we for example um one of the tracks that we'll be doing is 
have you heard uh, Son and Tans, Will Heard? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the... Which came out this summer. Yeah, it came out this summer. And uh, it's got an incredible vocal. And so we've just kind of put that with an acoustic. Um, now you like making your career in music, do you feel that you're able to do it because you're in Major in Chelsea? Do you feel more easy to be able to transition from that? Or would you have just done it anyway, even if you didn't do Made in Chelsea? Uh, I, think, I think I would have done it anyway. I don't know whether... With the music, it's like I don't know whether I would have necessarily put my eggs in that basket, if you know what I mean. So I don't know if I'd have pursued it in the same way that I am. Um, and I think if someone had said, do you want to do a gig? I'd have said, absolutely not. Like, I'm terrified. But then, sort of like through doing Made in Chelsea, I've kind of developed a, a better confidence in front of a crowd. Because um, we do all these, like, you know, we do these PA things where you go and front, stand up in front of a crowd and wave. And I always feel completely awkward about that. I think, sh shite, well, we should probably give them some sort of talent if people are here to see us. Yeah. So I much prefer the idea of going and picking up my guitar and strumming a song. Um, so I would never have had that confidence, but I would definitely have continued to sort of make music in my bedroom. Yeah. So I think the Made in Chelsea thing is definitely something that's brought it into the public eye. Yeah. Um, whether or not it would have ever got that far without it, I don't know music is what you want to do that is your dream career yeah and I, I never really I never really isolate things as like a career but I would yeah. say like if you said to me okay right what's going to be your dream year from now until next year I would say doing you know 280 shows every night in different cities so is, is that what you want to do you want to be like a gigging musician that's you don't want like would you ever want to record an album or an EP uh I would record an album purely on the basis of promoting a tour. Like, I, 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 I don't... I think the, my favourite thing about music is live music, and like, I, don't, I don't think you can get, these days... Um, I don't think you can get enough out of a recorded music that you can from a live show. So for me, it's much more important, the live show. Yeah. And there's, so much, there's so much interaction between like, the artist and the crowd that like, I absolutely love. And I think that's kind of like where the magic in music happens. Um, and I think, you know, you can't call yourself a musician unless you can do it live. So. Where do you think would be the best, best venue to play live? Well, that's a tricky question. I don't know. The O2. <laughs> That'd be pretty big. That's quite ambitious. <laughs> I was actually talking about this yesterday. It's really weird how like with music, you see artists, they go from playing like, 100 people venues 200 people venues and the next thing you know sort of like a summer later you could be playing on the main stage at Glastonbury yeah and that would just be unbelievable I don't know if I'd freak out too much though it is weird like when you so like the first the first ever I've only done two gigs now mm. the first one I did was in such a small venue for about 25 30 people and I loved it because I could pretty much do it without a microphone um and then the second one I did was much bigger and suddenly so much there's so many more th variables that like affect the sound and speakers here and you can't hear the musicians every now and then and it, it all it's all it's all you know suddenly the the sound technician becomes so important yeah. and I think that on a you know you, you often see them see the guys with the earpieces in on the big gigs I'd love to have a crack at like seeing what happens with the sound on one of those stages it must be terrifying so you seem to prefer like more intimate venues. That's like what you would like to see. That sort of music that you listen to. Yeah, I I definitely think that uh, an intimate venue is a much better way of like interacting with your audience. So I not to put a number on it, but I wouldn't want to ever play something bigger than five hundred people. I think I think that's quite a lot of people. Yeah. But like I think you know you lose some of the some of the uh, the magic if you put it on the stage in front of 10,000 people. So we have to talk a little bit about Made in Chelsea. Um, it's obviously a very exciting show to be part of. Um, what would you say your biggest moments have been? What, what's really stood out for you? Uh, for me, the, the standout moment was my first ever episode. So I sort of, you know, it was all, you never really know what's going to happen with Made in Chelsea. And they don't, you know, we don't get told anything and it's all very... Right, and you're in. And um, I got told about 
12 hours before that I was getting a flight to Saint Tropez. So I was like, okay, great. Um, I'll go pack my swimmers and uh, jumped on the plane. And then, then literally the next thing you know, they are miking me up um, and they're like, right, you're going to walk down this boardwalk and you're going to meet a girl and we want you to just chat to her. And if you, you know, if you fancy her, when obviously I, they knew that I fancied her because it was Louise. Um, <laughs> and they were like, you know, just have a stab at it. And I was like, is that it? Like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know what to do here. So I was terrified and I literally, that was it. I just walked straight in and I was like, oh my God, this is on camera. Um, and then I watched it back and I was like, oh my God, I really blew it. <laughs> so, so that was a really big moment for me, I think. And then just seeing yourself, seeing that, remembering how it was when I felt like getting off playing, filming it to then seeing it on TV, it's like, oh shit, what have I done? Is it really weird watching yourself back? Yeah, I hate it. I hate, I hate watching myself um, in the episodes. I really enjoy filming it though. Like I love filming and it's really fun and, but but I hate watching it back because you don't think about what you're filming when you film it. So you're like, eh, this is fun with our friends. And then you watch it back and you're like, oh, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> Do you think it's harder because you don't know what you're about to do or would you prefer to like rehearse things? Do you think you'd be more at ease? Uh, well, you'd be more at ease, but I don't think it would be as good a show. No, no. I, I, you know, that's the best thing about the show is the surprise element. Mm -hmm. um, I actually love it. Like sometimes, you know, someone will like walk into a scene and you just, you're not expecting it and I'll literally be like, ah, oh, well done. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I actually love that the realness of it because it makes it more fun when it and it I always say it's one of those things that when it's good it's really good mm -hmm. when it's bad it's really bad yeah. so you have a lot of um, different friends on set who do you say are your best friends that you hang out with offset so my best friends offset are Lucy and Stevie um, and but but we all hang out a lot actually off camera mm. um, I spend an awful lot of time with Proudlock um, I think we're both quite similar in terms of our interests. Um, and, you know, Jamie is probably one of the best people to have on a night out. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, we, we do actually all spend quite a lot of time together. Um, but I definitely, you know, day to day I see Stevie and Lucy almost every day. And have they been supportive of your music? Are they very interested in what you're doing? Yeah, they have actually. Stevie loves it and I'm hoping to get him on a track um, because Stevie can rap. Yeah, 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 and it's it it will blow you away. I um, I'm hoping that it will make it into the series at some point, but you never know. But yeah, no, he Stevie can rap, um, which is honestly one of the best things you've ever seen. And none of us knew he could do it. And we were on the way to film somewhere, and we got on a train, and we were all sort of like, we had I think we had a bottle of wine on the train, and we were just sort of joking around, and we just started like having a rap battle. And then Stevie just was like spitting. <laughs> lyrics for like five minutes straight and we were, we were it was like we went from we went from like like we were just staring at him like oh my god this is incredible like where does this come wow. from he was like yeah i rap what <laughs> that was so yeah it's quite the hidden talent really yeah it's an unbelievably hidden talent so hopefully i'll like coax that out of him and get him on stage at some point hopefully we'll get him on stage on the ninth that would that would be great, be great. Okay, don't take my word for it because he's a busy guy, but I'll try. And then Lucy is awesome because she's so blunt. So mm. if I like pick up my guitar and I'm like, hey guys, I started writing a new song. Like, what do you think of this? Ding, 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 ding. She's like, yeah, shit. <laughs> or she'll be like, actually, that's quite good. Yeah. And you know that if Lucy says it's good, then it's like, okay, really I can go and record that. And if she says it's bad, then just give up. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you want to hear? I tell you what, I've got a cover here with me that I did which you guys can listen to if you want. Yep, that'd be great. Yep. That'd be great. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> 